I'm going to talk about, first, about, well, as you can see, scientific opinion uh, and public opinion on climate change. So, so um, maybe if I could get a show of hands, I'm just going to ask a few questions first. So, many scientists say that average air temperatures around the world have increased since the 19th century, and this is commonly called global warming. Do you believe they are correct? So here are your three choices, yes, no, or I don't know. So, uh, yes, uh, no, I, or I don't know, okay. So move on to the next. So actually it's something similar to what we find in the general public. Here's a number of surveys. Uh, of the general public, you can see France, uh, a sample of a thousand, Germany, a thousand. These are uh, surveys that I we track down the, the data from, you know. So th these are um, calculated. I think this is by Ipsos, the top four um, Ipsos, the uh, European, European one, and the, the Australia and the US are slightly different surveys, but they all ask similar questions. You can see that. Most people, as in the audience here, most people answered yes, a couple of people answered no, and it's the same here, and a couple of people answered don't know. So, next question. Here are surveys of the scientific community on climate change. And these are the top ones of meteorologists, climate scientists, US climate scientists, and general scientists. And what we find is that 90 to 97 percent of scientists agree that there has been, that the climate is changing, or that it's uh, warmer now than the 19th century. So that when you hear 97 percent of scientists agree on climate change, this is what they agree on. They agree that the climate has changed, and that it is changing. They also agree that it's warmer now than at the end of the late 19th century. So, uh, the, the trickier question is, how much is human caused and how much is natural? So i got to ask, here are your choices. Entirely human caused, mostly human caused, both, mostly natural, entirely natural, I don't know. So, let's go through entirely human caused. Okay, well, not so many in this grade. Mostly human caused? Okay. Uh, boat? Mostly natural? Entirely natural? Don't know? Okay, so we move a range across all of the, the different ones. And this is what we find. Um, when you look at the general public, and this is the same surveys, all, although everybody, all, like 80 to 90 percent of, of the general public agree that climate has changed, is changing, and global warming has occurred, the same surveys show that there is disagreement over how much is human cause and how much is natural. Interestingly, the most common answer uh, seems to be a bit of both, which to me kind of makes sense as a default position. Um, the, unfortunately, the bottom survey for the U.S. didn't allow the option for vote. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess you can kind of say, I would imagine that if this was, you know, if you, can, you couldn't do that, some of that, some of that is probably green. But it's, I, I, I would, it, you can see around the world that it's similar things are happening. So what about the scientific community? And these are again the surveys here. And remember, these, all of these surveys all show that 90 to 97% of scientists agree that there is climate change. But how much is human cause and how much is natural? And you can see that there is actually a range of opinions. There, compared with the public, there is slightly more, the reds and yellows are bigger than in the general public. But you can see each, all of the categories are accounted for. And so you might say, well I've heard that 97% of scientists agree on that it's human caused. Well, what you have to do is read the fine print of these surveys that you hear, hear about 
typically what happens is, so this is one of the most famous, this was Dundorn and Zimmerman, and so what they ask is, well first of all, uh, this says they removed the, excluded the don't knows, 11% of scientists in this survey said they didn't know, which is quite a, a lot, but if you exclude that, you're then left with a, a, a lesser bit, but in this survey they just asked, do you believe that a significant amount of the warming is human caused? And for the general public, they would say, oh, you know, and so 82% said, yeah. Um, unfortunately, in the scientific community, significant is a term that people use, but they mean more than 5%. So if you're saying significant, it might sound like, oh, loads, loads of it. But actually, when you ask most scientists, they say, well, it's not zero. So, <laughs> so when you look at this, we have 7% said it's zero, and 82% said it's a little bit, might be some of it, is at least some of it is human cause. And then what we're finding is uh, that across the stuff, you have this range of different opinions. So why do we have this range of opinions? Um, next, okay, well, here is a key point but it depends what your views on whether it's human caused or natural depends on your political views. This is a survey of Australia. We can get similar ones for the US and for Europe and different ones like that. We keep finding the same thing. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Australian politics, but in Australia, the Liberal Party and the National Party are uh, conservative or right wing. Labour is left wing, Greens is left wing, and independent is somewhere in between. You know, it's independent, it's not affiliated to any of the parties. So they were asked, is climate change, global warming, is it not happening, don't know, natural or human induced? So again, we see this is a combination of the two bits of questions that we asked here. And you can see, yeah, that actually, that on, on, the, on the left, the red, the not happening, is a lot lower than among the right. So uh, conservatives are slightly more likely to say that it's that if climate change is not happening, or that they don't know. But the, most of them, uh, whether left or right, all agree that climate change is happening. The question is: Is it mostly human caused, or is it mostly natural? The gray, gray is natural, saying it's mostly natural, and the green is it's mostly human caused. You can see the left-wing Labour Party, the main, most of them think that it's human caused, and in the two uh, uh, conservative parties, the grey arrows are much higher. They think it's mostly natural. Interestingly, I think this is kind of intriguing, that the Green Party supporters, 17% of them believe climate change is natural. And uh, looking at the independents, it's 50-50. So if we move on to the next bit, yeah, just uh, contrasting tweets from 2013. This was May 2013, December 2013. The former president of the then president of the of the, and uh, the now president. And you can see, uh, Barack Obama, 97% of scientists agree climate change is real, man-made, and dangerous. And then uh, Donald Trump, they call it climate change now because the words global warming didn't work anymore. Same people fighting hard to keep it all going. So this is from this is adapted from the work of Professor Dan Han in Yale University. And what he did is he wants to know why do people believe when when they're answering it's human caused or natural? What do they, why do they believe? to give their answer. And there had been an assumption that it was called the knowledge deficit uh, model. People it, that were mostly left-wing, as I'll see, were saying, what's wrong with the right-wing people that they get the wrong answer? And they said, oh, they mustn't know enough about climate change. So Dan Cahan found that, oh, well, I can test that. I can find out what people know about, about climate change. So he did a series of general knowledge questions that are, anybody can, they're not science, they're, 
you don't need to be a scientist to answer them, but they're not easy either. So you can get a range of people from the lowest scoring percentile to the highest scoring percentile. What he found was that the chances that a liberal would believe global warming is mostly human caused increase the more they know about climate change. And so then he was like, okay, so that fits in with the knowledge deficit model, except the chances that a, a conservative would say if they it decreases, they become more convinced that it's mostly natural. So the more you know about climate change, the more you fall along party lines. <laughs> so uh, just to say, so now we seem to have three different perspectives. All of these groups agreeing that climate changes, but if you're on the left wing, the common answer is climate is changing, it must be, so it must be something to do with us. We have on the right wing, oh, but the climate has always changed, it must be part of natural cycles. And then you have the, if you're in between, you're like, I don't know, it's probably a bit of both. So, um, yeah, I just want to ask, does anybody want to volunteer about what it says inside the triangle? Uh, do, you, do you want to know, Anna, sir? Okay. Uh, okay. I'll say it in your head. Yes, take it in your head. <laughs> no, 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 take no, it in your head. That next no. slide. Just, so, a lot of people see Paris in the spring. Uh, hands up anyone who saw that? Okay. Well, yeah. Now, can you read yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Next, next slide. It's actually Paris in the oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, so we tend to see it here what we expect to see it here. So everybody expects to see Paris in the spring. And so we ignore the, 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 the second. Uh, mm -hmm. If something seems to agree with what we'd expect, we think, oh, I, exact, I, I was right all along. You know, uh, if they find something disagrees with us, then we kind of say, okay, there's something wrong. This can't be right. And so we kind of look and research and say, how can I find some reason to show that I was right all the time? And so I, I like this quote here. I don't know if you can read it. I've heard the rhetoric from both sides, time to do my own research on the real truth. And it says here, Literally, the first link to the degrees with what you already believe. <laughs> and then it's like, jackpot. Okay. <laughs> oh, down, down here it says, another link. Don't worry about this one. <laughs> so, um, now, scientists are affected too. Because scientists are people. And so they, they can have political ideologies. And it turns out that this is a complex thing, we don't have time to get into it, unless you have asked questions on it. But the, this survey that's done every couple of years of 16,000 professors in, at 260 uh, universities and colleges around the US. And one of the questions is, how would you characterize your political views? Far left is 11%. 50% liberal, 27% middle of the road, 12% conservative, mm -hmm. and almost nobody far right. Um, so what that's saying is 60% left wing, 27% centrist, 13% right wing. And you can see the general public, it's more like, well, I, it's hard to say whether a Democrat or Republican, are they truly left or right, or it's, it's a, say, a complex thing, but broadly speaking, you know, uh, if you say that the Democrat Party is the left-wing party, 31%, 24% right-wing Republican, and 42% independent. So that is twice as many left-wing in the professor orient as in the public, and <coughs> half as many uh, right-wing as in, as in uh, public. And here's the other thing is, when you look at individual faculties, you can find that, say, most of the conservatives tend to be in certain faculties. There's a higher percentage in business, in law, in economics. And so and then you have other faculties. Um, some of the social, social psychology, there's almost zero uh, conservatives. So this is, by the way, just liberals outnumber conservatives in this thing, five to one in academia. Uh, the next slide. 
is looking at financial journalists. So this was a survey of, uh, they, I, the authors went and identified by 4,000 financial journalists that have written uh, fine articles in major newspapers over the last number of years. And they emailed them all and contacted them and they got a response rate of about 10%, which is about powerful for the course for this. And they found, I'll just tell you a bit about it, more than 60% of our respondents have worked at least 10 years as financial journalists. 53% wrote at least 24 business articles in the past year. More than 70% are affiliated with the following news outlets. The Wall Street Journal, Financial Times, Bloomberg News, The Associated Press, Forbes, The New York Times, Reuters, and The Washington Post. So these are uh, top journalists in the fi financial journals. What's your political views? Very liberal, 17, 18%. Somewhat liberal, 41%. Moderate, 37%. Somewhat conservative is 4%. And very conservative is less than a half percent. When you add up the conservatives and the liberals, you have the liberals outnumber conservatives 13 to 1. And this is in financial journalism, which wouldn't necessarily, you would like to say, something like environmental journalism would probably be, it could, could well be different. This is specifically for financial journalism. So, what should we do? And so, the problem is, um, I, I, I call this the, it's always in the last place you look fallacy. So, you know, if you lose your car keys, you, uh, you, you keep on looking on, until you find them. Once you find them, you stop looking because you found them. Uh, the problem is that if we keep look for the truth until we found that we were right all along, you know, we're not actually searching for the truth. Truth is not like a set of car keys that you recognize once you found it. We really need to keep on looking until we've exhausted all the available answers. And hopefully this might be some way in this talks that we're doing today we can do it. So I just want to finish on um, at the last slide here. This is, I find this is a very good advice. This was John Stuart Mill writing in 1859 in his book on liberty. And he said, he who knows only his side, own side of the case knows little of that. And um, he also pointed out that, you know, you can't, if you want to find out what the other side is saying, it's not sufficient to find out from someone on your side. You'll get a straw man version of what's happening. It's not, it's, it's like some, oh, that's what those silly people think, you know. And you actually have to find out from people who actually believe them. And find out in the most plausible and persuasive way. Okay. That's it.